Perfect. So the one we we're talking about is about overlay and translation of something round to something square. And so it's like the size of your page. So you want to think about creating different type of form shapes. Oops, let's pull that in a little more. There we go. So you want to create different shapes, two shapes that overlap each other, some that will like square and round, some that will round square, rounded edges over square, circle over square. You'll have, that's, this is one side over here. You can have five to six different shapes like this happening, where you think about how one shape overlaps another, leaving room to show the shape behind, and you're drawing through it, overlapping that shape uh, on some. Some you just overlap by corner and edge with diagonal directions, some widen, think of how they widen out, uh, some will open this up a little more, there we go. some will square off and hang, some may have rounded forms. Now, these shapes are your blocking shapes. They're your base shapes. Um, they are the, the design shapes of what you're actually going to overlay. So you have uh, these, you can even do little ones if you want little, itty, smaller ones. So now you have this concept of overlaying one shape over another. Now these shapes themselves can actually construct into forms. So you want to think about how we will turn this into a cylinder shape on top of that shape. Draw through that cylinder shape. The one behind, you want to draw through it and as you draw, you can curve and straighten out the shape. It doesn't have to stay the same shape as you draw behind it. But this overlaps this shape. So now you have this curve, S C curve and S curve shape on top or behind this shape. And the one that's in front, you can easily show that by dropping in, say, an, an axis across the top, like that. This, uh, so you know that that's, that's the one that's on top, putting a axis of a point, cutting in half, vertical and horizontal. Your vertical is your major and your horizontal is your minor axis major minor axis the one underneath you can slowly draw through showing uh the cylinder shapes that are connecting it together 
you can also apply a line that uh, follows the form, the one that's curving and straight. You can show a line that follows the form. The one behind, you can curve and straight. The one on top, you can keep as a regular straight form that you can show. Now, this overlap that you have, the tops are circular, the bottom is circular. On all of these, you, uh, as you go through, let's do another one. I'll show you this one here. Let's square this one off. Where now I'm drawing the bottom, the front, and the side of this one. You can lightly draw through it like that, where it overlaps that one. This one here, this was drawn through, circular, with a, and I took the one behind and made it a curve to straight. This one here, you can do the same. You can block this one. So now you have rounded form and a squaring form. Same thing. There's a X. To kind of give you a sense of the horizontal minor vertical major. So you've built an overlap in a in a trans a actual transparent uh, uh, see of the drawing to see how they work over each other. So you always do two that have rounded form and one that has squared form. You always do two. Now the squaring form, uh, you can run that axis line across the side so you can see how it cuts through the uh, side of it. The one that's behind it, that shape that I drew that was behind it. Uh, let me see. This one has, oh, here it is. You can lightly put the same thing, a, a light x there across uh and what you want to do is to uh, with these is be aware of uh, the separation that they are now forms that are on top of each other they're not just shapes that are touching each other they're different forms that are on top of each other and as we take the next three like i say it can be a minimum of five to six uh, and if you want it, little ones, you can. Uh, the next three, you're going to do the same thing, but we're going to look at rounding and squaring the form. You say, well, how's that going to happen? Where you round the form on one end, the form is round, but then on the other end, it's going to be square. So if I'm starting off down here, square, With the squaring of the form, by the time I come to the top, I'm going to round the form. So the piece that's behind, uh, uh, overlapping it, may do the same thing. I'm gonna round the form, and remember I said you can curve the straight, so you can curve and you can square this one off at the end. So we can start off curve and then straight and that will help bring you into the squaring of the form but I still draw through it to see that rounding shape at the top. Same down here these short ones where I'm blocking is already rounded here so what's nice about this, this is already a ball. And this is a scoring form on top. On that one. This one here, I can round the edge here, curve the straight like that. 
so that form becomes a little more rounded. Now, like that. Now, the side plane on these is important because as you begin to curve your form, you'll notice is rounded here or square at the bottom. So therefore it straightens out the bottom. Curves on this end to give me that uh, square on this end but curving on the outside. This curve to straight, uh, to straight, that's a, I'm sorry, this S curve to C curve to straight. The lines you're working on are S curve, C curve, straight. That's the line design you're dealing with and how you encompass it on these shapes they can either stay squared and rounded or they will become rounded to square or they are rounded form square form or it is an actual blend of round uh to square that shows that separation between the plane these you don't have to worry about so much separation of plane because it already happens naturally because it's a rounded form rounded form you draw one line down you see the side as it goes around here on this uh, c curve to s curve you can round the form and still follow the form with a line that works itself around because areas are going to flatten out what you're doing in this task is flattening out your rounded forms so that's what happens when you blend the round and the square together it's like taking a lump of clay and saying i'm going to flatten one side while the other side stays curved i'm going to push in this side to become this flat side but that flat side, if you rotate it around, will have a lump of clay. And then you're going to flatten that lump of clay, still having its form here. Still having its form there but then if you turn that lump of clay around on its side you'll notice the flattening plane but yet the rounding the rounded side square side like so So right now it's just this flat end and then when you rotate it, you can see the plane here to here. That works itself around and on that side of the, of, of the form. And you have a, as you notice, when it's smashed, there is an S shape here. This is your straight, and then your C curve is along the edge here. C curve. There's the S curve, and that's the straight curve. That's the straight, this is straight. So you're always dealing with uh, two curves uh, plus a straight. So that's your uh, 2C plus uh, 1S will equal form, if that was an equation. <laughs> uh, so the idea is you have a lump of clay, and then you are taking this clay, flattening the sides, and then um, making sure that the uh, form uh, holds those three parts. That's the SC. S curve, C curve, straight. What it does is it allows you to uh, control the form and how the form will insert and overlap each other.
This allows you to deal with the uh, insertion and overlap of the form. And the reason being is that you're going to uh, deal with that as we start to uh, do your drawing overlay. So understanding squaring the body, understanding rounding the body, and then overlapping the body. And as we then merge the rounding and square together. So you always start off with a round and then square and then three that will vary between the two. You have a blend of rounding and squaring variations. So this one here was overlapping this little guy back here. So I need to actually draw that in in that same fashion. S curve, C curve, planar structure. So that's uh, uh, this build out where we overlap one section of another um, is what's important first on that's this side then the other side it's taking uh, you're loosely drawing different let me start with my pencil for a moment. Where's my, oh, here it is. There's a little away the needs of the end of the pencil. <laughs> all these goodies here great now this side is just loose fast you're drawing round squaring shapes you are just letting them all overlap each other really thin one shapes that will all have tops and sides as you work through them Work with the side of your pencil. Think of really compressing and squaring at the same time. Get used to large ones up against small ones that you overlap. with light line to have your dense line working through. Starting off with a circle uh, ellipse and then pulling it to square off and turn to square off on the other end. Getting used to making thicker egg form that cuts and squares off at the bottom. Always thinking, oh yeah, I'm gonna curve one in, like so, overlapping the line. And then I'm going to straight in out another side and square off and in. Thinking about it as form, that means one part will have to have a straight line coming across it, like so. So you're seeing the squaring as it emerges into the rounded area. Your um, taking a basic block, like I say, and curving one side, keeping that straight on that block 
and then you can uh, round off and in like that you see that it's always keeping if you think of just drawing out simple little and you rotate them around and you say okay I'm gonna round off and in keep one side straight I'm gonna curve and pinch another like so and then either round that side off or square that side off. You may do the opposite over here, round off and in, C curve, uh, take the other side, pinch, that's your S. And on this one, I can square off the end at the bottom. You see that it falls below, uh, it falls below it. And you can see how one side can have uh, a mass like that. Well, for intermediate, you want to actually always put a mass tone on one side of everything so you can see the separation between the light side and, the, and your dark side. Now, for beginning, you want to always make sure that when you do these, put in a, a slight direction line so we know where you're going with the form. So it's like across and back. It comes across and down. Uh, you can do more than one across to break it up. Like so, but get used to this movement where, see, this is that S curve, C curve, straight. There's that S curve, S curve, C curve, uh, straight. The straight's over here, straight. And the easiest thing, instead of just trying to draw it out from beginning, draw it out in a block. Like I said, um, this would be the page, and it's, you have, um, more more page on this side more space on this side than the other because these are larger these are smaller so it'll just be a separation of large to uh, medium the way you break the page up but to do the one on the right uh, side is to enable yourself the room to Enable yourself the room to just, the easiest thing is to make this series of transparent like boxes and different little, little <laughs> epic fail. Yeah, epic fail there. I don't know how that, like somebody pushed it over from the front. That's interesting. Uh, that was interesting. Uh, so there it goes again. Uh, put that aside there. Yeah. Epic fail. We don't want that. Yeah. Okay. Let's get this back in order. <laughs> on something here. There we go. We have another student coming in. There we go. So let's get this turned around where we will have everything needed to be seen. Here are my boxes. So you get a chance to see it upright. So as you draw these uh, box forms, likely box forms, this is the one for the on the right side. The ones on the left side, 
the ones on the left, you these larger ones, you're just drawing the, the open flat shapes and they overlap each other and you draw right on top of them. These they're more they're freehanded in. So it's best to create the box shape and all and you already have your flat. Can anyone see his screen? Because mine's all black. I can see it, but I don't really I see like a small little like Am I supposed to see the table? Mine's yeah. frozen. Oh, okay. Oh, let, me, uh, let me redo it. Let's try it again. Can you see the screen? There you go. I can see it now. Oh, yes. We can see it now. That was just for a second you couldn't see it? Or you mean this whole process you couldn't see anything? For like a little second, a couple seconds. <laughs> oh, okay. I mean, I, I definitely tell me if it was the whole process. It's like I do it over again. <laughs> As if we got to start over. <laughs> no, you're fine. The um, right side is block form. The left side is overlay form. So. Uh, as you begin to work out the the other side, you can just make the blocks small ones and vertical ones that they can slightly overlay. But the idea is that you already have a straight, and then you can curve uh, S curve, C curve, and then S curve any end to give it that break up. And the opposite side, since it's a straight, you can also cut into it like that. You can dip down into it. So you can see the form having a center. That's that major axis. And then the minor, that's that line I say that comes across like that. So you can lay the mass tone on the side so you can see that the there's a top and a side and front. Now the one underneath, you can keep the straight on the outside and you can actually curve this in instead of that side and keep the straight there and it's squaring on the end. And here you can round off the form on the other side like that. So it's the opposite uh, of it. Uh, of the shape here the same thing you can curve straight and then round off and then we still have a straight line here uh, that's a long C curve this is a straight line S curve round off behind it uh, they don't have to overlap if you don't want uh, but then you can do the same at the bottom make it a really big dip and pull S curve lightly behind, come around and still have a straight there, but this is squared off in the front. Uh, there. And notice how when I make the marks to separate, you notice there are major line marks that come across. They're, they're separated, uh, but not scribble scrabbled in. They're clean clear uh, uh, line tones for separating or here a mass tone across the side. Um, and what it does is if I'm lightly making a cylinder and I can lightly square off one end, you're starting off with a light blocking. It's not a heavy, heavy starting drawing line. Lift your hand up off the drawing. This, uh, and I'm showing it like this so that when you draw, you're aware that when I draw, I have to sketch lightly my, my lines as I block them in. And there are little thin ones that you lay in, hairlines, soft hairlines of shaping out uh, the form, soft hairlines that you're able to look at as the blocking construction and that's what this this drawing is going to be about because you're used to 
gesture, gesture shape, which this can convey as, but then you, you were talk, we talked about sight and measuring. Now we're talking about the actual expression of form and how they actually work with each other, overlap upon each other, and separate themselves from each other through an uh, overlap or an insertion onto each other. The way you lay down your marks is going to be how you identify what you see. So here I'm just blocking in a shape that would be similar to, say, a form on a human body. But then you have to look at how the form curves, straightens out on one side. But notice how thin that is and thicker that is. And then uh, going from thin uh, thick to, to thin, like that. The Now this front here area is curving and this area is straightening out. So then I will show that rape line, see that line like that, as a softer curving line. That was happening is that this area would be a group of muscles in, uh, inserting into another group of muscle here. So what you're thinking about is how the form is going to work itself over the other. But like so. Now, this is one shape. Remember, you could block in another shape on top of it like this. Which could be an overlapping form. So then you come in with the same but what may happen is that all of this together may be one form. Notice I drew that other shape on top and this is now can all by line weight all this becomes can become one form. And this is, doesn't exist. This is now just behind it. But in reality, this is the actual overlapping form that groups together. As you see that this shape is on overlapping this one. But it may be one form. Why? Because this whole entire form may end up being... the thigh of the leg that's protruding out. There's the lower leg, the knee comes out here. You have the rectus femoris muscle on top of the vastus group below. So this group of muscle starts to protrude from underneath one other group of muscle, which is the vastus, and the rectus starts to protrude from it. So what I drew was the illusion of what you see and how you construct into it. So this area will overlap with shapes over shapes in order to explain the protrudence of tendons and muscle groups that push out from underneath the wrap that we're in. And that's that skin wrap we have. So when you lightly practice um, that process of light shape over shape and amassing the whole form, you're actually drawing the muscle groups that are actually pushing, protruding, and inserting into one another. But you must first have an awareness of how they work together when you are wrapping, when you are drawing the basic shape. And that basic shape, uh, going shape to shape, compiles itself on top of each other. So you have insertions, overlaps, and compiling. And you have intrusion. That happens. So 
the body also has a sense of wedging itself into each other. And we'll get into that when we, as I start doing the uh, visual demo uh, with the figure. Any questions on that uh, so far? Remember, you're basically taking that lump of clay, packing it, flattening it, and uh, stretching it. Pack, flatten, stretch. That's what you're drawing when you are uh, dealing with the shapes uh, on this warm-up uh, process. Lock in. Form out. Squaring, rounding, and blending. Same here, we are now dealing with the block itself that you then flat, you would then uh, uh, pack together and then stretch. So those, that uh, area of warm up is um, uh, one that deals with how you handle your mark. Because the way to get the look that's there, you have to, it deals with how you handle the mark making. And